What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 182 of Two Amazon Sellers in a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo and Netrush. And today, we got a great topic, launching yeah. and ranking products in 2022. Who needs that? Who, who <laughs> needs that, right? Uh, it's, and we've got the perfect guest on to talk all about that. This is going to be a fantastic conversation. I'm very excited. Um Launching new products is my absolute favorite thing. So I always get excited to talk about tactics and strategies. Uh, Ian Page is joining us from Bullseye Sellers. Uh, Ian, what's up, man? What's up? It's good to be here, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Excited to learn more. Uh, the, so when I came across the Ian, just a little backstory. Yep. Uh, obviously, social media, Facebook. Uh, Ian's posting all types of crazy like results and ranking things and launching. And, like, who is this guy? We gotta get this guy. Yeah, we gotta get this guy on here. So, I reached out to reached out to him. Luckily, had a call. Uh, learned a little bit more about him. Uh, then told Dustin, "Yeah, this guy's coming on the podcast." So, we're excited to have you because you know ranking and launching, especially now in, in the competitive world of Amazon, it, it's just gotten really more difficult because of. What they're trying to uh, TOS and PPC spins going up and clicks are going up. There's just a lot, lot here. But um, and I know that Dustin, this is your, usually your part. But before we get into it, uh, give us a little bit of a. You don't have to give us a whole nut, nuts and bolts. But just give us a little bit of background on on you and, and how you got into the space. I got into the space through one of those courses that people were selling. I had a friend that was, you know, I didn't know at the time he was getting a commission. Right, that's how these courses get oh. sold. <laughs> you know, this is back in 2014 and. Um, now we know it's kind of the good old days, right? Back then we thought it was competitive. We didn't really know, right? Compared to how it is these days. And, um, I paid, I way overpaid. I think I paid like $3,500 for this course and I wanted a better life. Like who, like who doesn't at this point, I, I would say I didn't overpay cause I've gotten a lot out of it over the long run. Um, I, I started a little, uh, a little Amazon store, my first product did really well at launch and I had a really good run for a couple of years and around 2017, I got an offer to, to, to buy it. And I knew it was an offer I wasn't going to get a year later because the, a lot of the international sellers coming in got really hard around 2017, 2018. I saw the writing on the wall. I took the money and I, I, I sold the business. Then around 2018, after I just was farting around for a year, kind of figuring out what am I going to do with my life now that I sold that business, um, I had some people reaching out to me a lot about, Hey Ian, you know, I heard, you know, Amazon, one thing led to the, another, and I started charging for it. Um, and when I built this business, I built it always with the mindset of what, what, what did I want that I didn't have? Hmm. What service did I need that was not available when I was a seller? So all my services are, um, kind of your greatest hits or your, your, your favorite items on the buffet. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, within reason, you know, I, and I know that there's services that anyone could offer that, that, that can go pretty, pretty on the extreme. So I had to be within reason and do stuff that um, services that one never hurt another seller. That's like my number one rule is like, I, I want to help you succeed, but not at the expense of someone else. Um, number two, I'm not breaking any laws. I'm an, I'm, I, 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 I like my life and I want to keep my life, uh, uh, the way it is. So I never break laws. And then number three, um, I want you to know the risks of any service that I have. If you're going to, if you're going to put any risk on there, I want you to really have your skin in the game and not put it on the onus on, on, on my company. So we've always been very transparent with our cu customers and I'm just kind of giving that preload going into some of the services I'm going to talk about. Um, but that's the mindset of how I started this business, why I started the business and it's kind of gone out of control since then. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's, let's hit on that risk. Let's hit on that risk. Cause yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what this is getting into. Like, right. Like you as an Amazon seller, like you got to take some risk now. Like it, 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 you, there's just things you have to do and it's probably going to violate TOS. And I'm not saying have to do like, you know, take it nope. for what it's worth. There's no but have like, to. Yeah. There's no have to do this, but there's things that your competitors are doing. Um, and they're probably getting a leg up on you. And so you have to kind of live a little bit of risk. I keep saying have to, you don't have to, but being risky kind of comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Um, unfortunately, you're running a business that you don't control all aspects of it. It's not, it's not your Shopify site where you control um, mm -hmm. your, 
what, what, what the people see when they come to your store. You control the whole customer journey uh, on your own website. When you're on Amazon, you don't control very much at all. You have a very small amount of re real estate. Look at it like you have a little cubicle and that's all you have. So mm -hmm. when guys launch products, they, they don't realize, at least with, with people that don't work with me, <laughs> guys that work with me, I think realize it at this point, they don't realize that every single day the wind, the wind blows in a different direction, meaning someone um, new will come into the space. 10 new guys will dominate the space within a week. Um, sometimes a big guy will get kicked off Amazon and you'll get more sales and you'll, you won't have any idea why, but the wind's always changing and blowing different directions. And it's like, it's like literally the weather, you never know what's going to go, what's going to happen. So there's a huge amount of lack of debt. There's a huge amount of lack of control. I would say like, there's probably 75% of no control. So I'm trying to get the full 25% of control for my clients. And that mm -hmm. does involve taking risk. It just and, does. And the, the, some of the risks you're talking about is obviously like, you know, like you said, you could, your product could all of a sudden have all these competitors that were not there when you were launching and ranking. And yeah. you could have your listing could be suspended. Your account could be suspended. All of a sudden, Amazon could decide that your product that has no pesticides in it is going to be classified as a product with pesticides in it. And it's all. Or, or, how about, or how about an adult product? Like it's like. Adult. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure how my like shampoo is an adult product. Right. Right. That happens but, all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then yeah. you gotta you gotta protect your like your brand. You gotta protect your listing. And then, you know, what if somebody upvotes all your negative reviews? I'm you know I'm going through this now where all, all these negative reviews show up and like I'm, my sales drop. I'm like what the hell's going on? And all these negative reviews are now on page one. It's like where'd these come from? You know, it's like. You, you got to constantly have your head on a swivel here because things are coming at you. Exactly. And I, I, I got to say, I, I'm kind of on the side of the seller. You know, I, I feel like with the partnership between seller and Amazon, Amazon doesn't need the, the partnership. You know, the mm -hmm. seller needs the partnership. So the seller is the one that's 90% invested and Amazon's just that little 10% invested. And I am, and that, that really shows. Um, I had a client the other day, just get, their 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 accounts suspended they didn't actually do anything wrong and they had to invent an entire story of what they did just to get it reinstated they had to literally say i'm guilty and they had to, we literally went we're like well let's invent a story let's create a story and let's invent a story to make them happy and amazon was thrilled thank you wow what a story and they gave them their account back it's like because amazon wanted to see the dead body they're like we know you killed somebody so we're like, good. Let's let's make it. Let's let's make a murder scene for them because we didn't do anything, and we did it. And they're like, great, thank you. You're you're good to go. It's almost it's like, like what kind of partnership gotta, is that? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, we'll just give you what you're asking for, and just to get off the hook here and get our account back. That's what we did, and we uh, and it was it was it was a wild idea. Like, let's just let's just pretend they're right, and let's just create a whole scene based on that. And it worked. But that's but that's where like a seller that's on their own, they don't know what to do here. Like they're just on their own and they're like, okay, I guess my account suspended. Uh, this Amazon thing is a fraud and go on with their mm. own thing. They don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't know the yeah. hoops to jump through. Well, that's a little advice for anybody listening. If if you if you feel like you're wrongfully suspended, let go of your ego. Just let go. It tell them exactly what they want to hear. What are you gonna lose? You already yeah. lost the account. You already lost it. You're not making any money anyway. <laughs> tell them what they want to hear. Tell them you killed six people. Like whatever it is, just tell them. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I found that out early on. I forget what it might have been um, a dangerous goods claim or something, something like yeah, yeah. And uh, I reached out to one of those services, and they're like, "You got to take ownership of it, even if it wasn't your fault." I'm like, Correct. "I'm guilty. I didn't even do anything." They're like, trust mm -hmm. you have to do it. Like that's what they want to hear. And then you'll get your, your ASIN back up and, and going. I'm like, okay, whatever this means. This is kind of strange, but whatever. It works. But, it works. If I was one of those Amazon lawyers, I'd be all day just saying the same thing. Admit guilt. Good. Admit guilt. Good. You know, that's what I would be saying yep. all day. Um, these, yeah. So that's – go ahead. Now I was going to say, these are things that people who are just starting in this space, they're launching their first product or launching their business – they they're unaware that these are possibilities that could come down the pipe uh, yeah. where I mean, that's a scary scenario. You invest 20 grand into a new product, you launch it. And then 
all of a sudden you get one of those emails where your ASIN suspended or your account suspended. That is a sleepless night for sure right there. And, and then let's talk about the, the ranking and the effects after you get it back. And this yeah. is another part of, and this will segue well into some of the services. So let's say you get shut down and you miraculously get it back up in two or three weeks, which is on the very short end of the estimate. You are now, you have a, a listing that has almost no ranking. I mean, your ranking can go from number five to number 150 in that, in that two week period. Mm -hmm. Amazon's not going to put you back to number five. That's not the way they work. They're not going to go, oh, okay, you're, you're live again. Oh, we're so sorry. Let's bring you all the way back to where you were before. <laughs> they're going to, in, in a large way, they're going to suppress your listing by the visibility that it's going to be uh, displayed. Um, the PPC is all of a sudden not going to respond well. It's, it's a bizarre situation that people will go into when they get their listing suppressed. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons that ranking became a thing actually with my business is I had people who were like, I ran out of inventory and my ranking ever since I ran out has never gotten back on its own. I've been blowing money on PPC all day, every day. And the other reason is uh, my listing got su suppressed because someone claimed that well, there was glass in it or some competitor, you know how these people can easily mm -hmm. do that. And I'm like, how is that? how is that a wrong thing for me to want to help this client get the ranking back? I just don't, I feel very justified in, in helping the client take a little bit of risk to get their, their rightful position that they had before they got taken down. And that's one of the reasons we do ranking is because of listings losing ranking sharply because of inventory issues, which we had huge inventory issues last year. Remember the IPI problem everyone had? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was killing well. everyone's rank. Um, it was good business for me in a way because I was doing a lot of ranking, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't want that. I don't want people to have to use my services because of a constriction that Amazon imposes on their inventory. Like that sucks. So that's kind of a, just several of the reasons why the ranking service is a measured risk that people take. Let's talk about that. And, and you, you probably know more than Dustin and I about this. Uh, Terms of service just got, not just, but a couple months ago, yeah, just got updated. What what's that summary of that? What, what's happening there? The simple summary is nothing actually changed. Um, they just clarified. Ranking manipulation was always a little word deep in the thing that no one cared about. Mm -hmm. If you go back to an earlier version of TOS, which I'm sure you can find online because it's you know people have them out there, you will notice ranking manipulation was a violation of terms of service. I've always considered search find by a ranking manipulation. I'm not one of these people who's like, well, it's technically not because, you know, like, I, I'm not like that. I, I just see it straight. I go, yeah, it's violation. Okay. So what happened in, well, what was it? October, September? Yeah. Yep. Was they basically said, such as, they basically were like, here's some examples. Mm -hmm. you, you know, buying your product back, right? Having people search and purchase a product that you reimburse them for. Like, you know, I don't know the exact wording, but you guys get it. So all they did was just clarify their original position. And so my position never changed <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> well, it really freaked out a bunch of people, right? Like everybody got these emails and like, ah, and immediately they, you know, whatever they were oh, doing, yeah. they, they quit doing or they pivoted to some other type of thing. Because uh, it's getting harder and harder, I, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but launching products are, are people, it's getting riskier, I guess, uh, to, to launch products a little bit more because it's now been clarified in, in this TOS. Correct. Yeah, I would say the risk has gone up because the clarification is pretty darn straightforward. Um, that also means that Amazon's internally very aware of the process. So that clarification just shows they know what we're doing. Like, come yeah. on. Okay. So that definitely brought the risk up. Um, the problem with the whole ecosystem of Amazon is just because the risk is higher doesn't mean that people don't feel they have to do it anyway. Mm. Yeah. And that's a feeling. That's not what the, it's like you said earlier, they don't have to do anything, but they feel that if they launch a product, especially in competitive spaces, toys, supplements, skincare, et cetera, they feel that their product will never get out of obscurity. And they'll blow 50 grand on PPC for what? Three reviews at the end of it? Five? And still you know? on page three. Eight, yeah, eight, eight costs 180. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've just, I've seen this time and time again. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, so let's let's 
pivot here a little bit so we can start talking about this ranking and launching. Um, who is an ideal client to come work with you? Is it someone mm -hmm. who is like in the product research stage that do you help in that area, like trying to figure out which product they should be launching or someone who has been suppressed or they're trying to rank, you know, they're launching their new product and they're trying to boost that ranking. Who Who's a good fit for working with you? Generally a seller who is at the end of the launch cycle, like they've, they have a listing, the inventory is checked in or it's almost checked in, you know, I have a lot of conversations of it's on a boat. I mean, you know, I've heard it's on a boat for a year now, right? <laughs> Probably because it was on a boat. It, <laughs> it was, was on, on a boat, boat for a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd get to the point where I'd be like, see you later. Call me. You know, I wouldn't expect to call back for a year. You know? yeah. Yeah. But if the listing is there, the inventory has been purchased, you've done the research. We don't really have time to go deep into your product research. Like guys, you know, the scalability of that. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I do have brands that I manage but it's a very limited amount of brands. I think we manage maybe 24, 25 brands. It's a very small group. And yes, for those guys, we have meetings about what their next product's going to be. For everybody else, it's basically a la carte. Come to me when you're ready and we will help you with the actual, from the day the listing goes live for generally that first 60 day period. All right. I'm already yeah. excited to have this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you want to get into the weeds. I get it. I get it. You want to get into the weeds. Okay, Tiptoeing okay. around it. Oh, yeah. so, man. So, look, I'll get into the weeds. I'm, I'm very, I'm very um, overt about, about, about everything we do because I have nothing to hide about it. Okay. So basically, we have, we have three different what I would call ranking launch programs under the heading of ranking or launching. Let's start with the launch. Because that's the that's the real finicky one. That's like when people feel like they just had a baby and they're like very scared. And that is called quantum. We call it quantum just because we love the name. That's the only reason we call it quantum. And because I used to watch the show Quantum Leap. I love that show. But um, the whole point is to help speed up the time from when the listing goes live to when the listing is in the mature, stable position. That's my whole purpose. Some and with with. In Amazon's ecosystem, sometimes that never even happens. Yep. Without it. It literally you can have a listing for a year and a half and it's never in that mature, indexed, well ranked, you know, position. So the way we do that is we typically go after root keywords and we base it on the title and we base it on the, the North Star competitor. I like to go off one North Star competitor. So if you're coming out with a vitamin C cleanser, which hey, I don't recommend you do. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> using this example, it's pretty competitive. You know, everyone's everyone's looking at the top three or four guys in the space. So we do the same thing. What are they doing right? What keywords are they ranking for? What are they converting for? If they're in the top 10 on this list of keywords and your product's exactly the same as their product, it's those are likely candidates. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we put together the keywords. Um, we generally go off of... Um, the Helium 10 data. Helium 10 is, is, has a great service. Their Cerebro is a great product. Mm -hmm. um, their CPR is pretty accurate. Sometimes it's a little on the low side, but I usually go off CPR. And that's, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, that's their little calculation of how many you should give away to, or how many do you need to sell if they don't want to use the word giveaway to rank on that keyword. So picture it like this, guys, like six to up to 15 keywords all being hit at one time concurrently. And the way we're hitting them is with slow daily drips of giveaways that are done through search find by. And for uh, if anyone is listening and doesn't know search find by, it's exactly what it sounds like. Someone searching a keyword, finding a product and purchasing the product after they search the keyword. And they're avoiding sponsored ads. So they're looking for it organically and they're buying it. Because the Amazon algorithm is favors profitability, and do you guys think that's ever going to change? Uh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Amazon's not going to put their worst selling product first. I can tell you that right now. Um, because it favors profitability and conversion, search find buy will will always be uh, maybe not. Let's not say always, but will will probably be around for a long time as mm -hmm. a way to get ranked. So typically with a launch. On the low end, we're giving away 50 units. On a high end, I don't like to go above 300 these days. Even 300 to me is like a real testing of, 
how the, the capacity of the ship, you know, it's kind of getting rocky at that point. Uh, but typically 150 to 200 right in the middle. And they're giving away 150 to 200 units and they're spreading that, those giveaways based on these keywords. Some keywords might get one or two purchases a day while other keywords are getting a purchase every two or three days. Mm. And that's all governed by the search volume of the keyword. Okay. So just picture a slow drip for 30 days between large keywords, medium, small keywords, all related to the root. I don't go into keywords like best Valentine's gift for 2022. It's like, right. We're doing root keywords. Okay. Like, like if I was going to do a search by by ranking program for your, for your Nike sweater, I would literally say blue Nike hoodie sweater for men, you know, those kind of keywords. Then one, one part I forgot to mention is before we even put these audience together, which we have a private pool of, I don't even know at this point, tens and tens of thousands of people. We actually filter the audience based on what product they're giving away. And let's just do the Nike sweater as an example. I want men who are of the right size based on whatever I'm giving away. If I'm giving away a medium, don't really want extra large guys and I don't want tiny guys. I want guys who are going to wear it. Mm. Okay. So we actually find an audience that fits the product. And this is a key part of this. Okay. And you'll see why in a second. Mm. So once we put the audience together, we have men who wear size medium, who are going to actually wear the sweater. They start buying these products in a search find buy. And we don't use any links. So they might have to go into the deep Amazon web to find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they have to find it. If the product isn't findable, we can't run the keyword. Simple as that. Then what happens is throughout that 30 day period, you're going to start seeing some nice ranking because you get in that daily drip, you know, you're hitting those keywords and the keywords are helping each other. You know, we, we might say the word blue in three keywords. We might say medium twice. We might say Nike five times. And that's helping each keyword. And before I know it, it's just this like spider web effect or a domino effect. Somewhere in that 30-day period, we're creating a Facebook pop-up group. And we actually invite all those men into the Facebook pop-up group. And I call it a pop-up group because it literally pops up and gets deleted at the end. Hmm. And this is the opportunity that my brand owners have because they get invited to the group where they can find out what people really think about the, about the sweater. And I always wanted that. I always wanted to like create a little test environment, kind of like if I was creating a, like a pharmaceutical, I wanted to see it like what effect this pharmaceutical had on people. Did they get better? Did they not, you know, and log those things and, and see if my product that I put all this time into researching and China manufacturing and all that actually paid out and became a good quality product. And I didn't want to hear about it after the listing was damaged by negative reviews. I wanted to hear about it before. So that's why I created that. So that um, little group. Can I, can I yeah. interrupt you real quick? Uh, on that step right there, <clears throat> so you're, whatever, 20 days into the launch uh, and you've created this, this pop-up group. If you start getting negative feedback about the product, is that d kill like or adjust? What are you doing at that point? Yeah, usually we're, we're saying sell through really quick um, in order – like call your manufacturer. It's usually the first thing. Like we had a situation where it was a far, it was actually a supplement. <laughs> this is crazy. The top of the supplement was sealed shut. Mm. They could like no one could open it. They had to use like literally <laughs> wire cutters. Oh right. And how many negative reviews would you have gotten? It would have been just ballistic. Like, thanks for sending me stuff that didn't open, you know, right. one star, one star, one star, one star. So our people were like, Hey, these supplements don't open. So it was great. He literally delete, he, he, took the listing out of commission, restocked, did it all over again, and we did another launch. And think about how much that saved us. Oh, like, just dude. the group and the feedback. Yeah. Like he found, out, he found out by day four, day four, day five. Like as soon as Prime hit those people, he already was getting the information. That's, that's priceless. A, that's that's priceless a valuable. That's the first time I've heard that strategy. Me too. I've never heard of yeah. this pop-up group kind of thing. That's And that's – and like as a seller and you know, you know as well like that's that's super valuable like to get yeah, that feedback quick exactly. is exactly. that response do do a lot do, i mean do you get good response through those groups are people interacting amazing amazing i get screenshots on a daily basis of just like 30 40 comments on posts i guess what happens because the, we sorry. tell people to be responsive we tell people like if you're going to get the sweater 
that's $35 retail. We want you to be involved. Like we want you to say something, try it on and like write about it. Don't, don't go to them. And the, our, our people are really cool. How is there anything I can do with the dust? I know you're excited. I'm sorry. That's my question. <laughs> is there anything I can do with the group? Say, say I got the group, a uh, thousand people are in it. And is there anything I can do with that group before it gets deleted? You have 60 days to do whatever you want. Add them to my email list. Send them to my um, page. Except for everything that you just said. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, we, 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 don't want our, we don't want our members being poached because what's going to okay. happen with that is that our members, they're just eager to please people and they're easily going to be like, sure. And yeah. before you know it, before you know it, they're over writing reviews for a living. And I don't want that. You know, okay. I, gotcha. I don't want to, I don't want to create a review mill out of my situation. I want them to be kind of pure and clean. And I, I don't trust every seller to judge that strategy appropriately. Sure. So, but yes, what you can do is your job as the brand owner is to get information. Your job as the brand owner is to get, get, get videos, get photos, get content. The content we get is incredible. Mm-hmm. We had a, I, we, we, um, I had someone that was um, selling a, like a, like a really good foot pedicure um, combo pack that could like, make your feet freaking beautiful at home. It was a great product. I was really excited about it. And she was like, let's get to before and afters. You know, I want to see your feet before. I want to see your <laughs> feet after. And, and I think she did like a, a gift card. And I'm not talking like reviews. I'm just talking, I want to see photos. And best photo gets like $25 gift card, right? Man, the amount of feet that came in. <laughs> was, uh, you know, so just think about all that content. It, it could be used for your Shopify. It could be, it could be, pushed over to Amazon if you want to go that route. It's gold. It is absolute priceless gold. That's and a that foot fetish's dream right there. It's a, it's a foot fetish's dream, man. So <laughs> we got we got tons of examples like that. I like that strategy. Yeah. I like this little yeah. pop-up group thing because uh, yeah, you can really fun. get some it's feedback. Even if I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to launch this product. Does it even make sense if I were to have this like I don't know. That might be kind of good stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've even had guys come in and just do a hundred units and they only ordered like a hundred or 200 and they're just doing the pop-up just to try it out and get feedback. You know, they're so doing ha- seller fulfilled. They're not even sending them in. They're just doing seller fulfilled. That's, like, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So what happens yeah. after? So the, the launch is going on. We can do the 30 day launch drips and all that. I'm sure like do, do sellers, you probably do like, do you want to be running heavy, aggressive PPC to kind of like send signals from every different like yeah. traffic source. Yeah. Like for, I'll just tell you the strategy for, for the guys that we manage because we run all of it. So like the, the program, I call it the, the launch program with all the keywords in it. We send it over to the PPC team and we go, look, this is a launch, go aggressive. So they usually do like 50% above suggested bid, you know, exact campaigns, broad phrase and try to get any combination of those words that they can. And that only helps with the indexing because you can't launch without an index keyword. If, if it's right. if the keyword is not even coming up with the product, we can't do anything. So PPC actually goes first for a couple of days. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then the other part is the price. And this is, I think, something we should spend at least three or four minutes talking about. Let's do it. Um, you cannot launch trying to make profit. Like, it's just those days are over. You can't. You have to launch at a break even, even price. I'm not even saying lose money. Just break even. Like, don't. Don't be greedy. At the first 60 days, you have no reviews. Your, your listing is, in, in, in the customer's eyes, is a total shaky, risky investment. Why do you think they're not, why, why do you think that they're going to be eager to buy your product over another product with 10,000 reviews at the same price? I'm waiting for an answer. I've been waiting for years. Like, there's no good answer. <laughs> well, I can so, tell you, I can yeah. tell you what uh, brands would, would tell you or, or business. They're like, oh, you don't know. My product's so much better. I'm like, well, they don't know that. <laughs> I Okay, so I, I always give a really like kind of uh, – I feel like people's boxing coaches, like you know those angry boxing coach kind yeah. of guys? Yeah. They're like, you know, like just total jerks. I give that kind of answer. Like, yeah. you, like they don't know it's better. To, in, to, in their opinion, your product's just the same price, just worse. Like yeah. they don't know that, oh, yours is – yours has 20% less plastic. It's like, no one cares. No one right. cares. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, everyone wants to just get a deal and price is king. So 
they will care later when you have a lot of reviews, then those kind of little things will help you that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying it, ma- it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter in the first 60 days. Right. Okay. So, um, and yeah, I like it when people put a little extra work and they actually like create better products. So don't get me wrong, create a better product. Always, always, always create a better product, create a better listing. But in the beginning, price is going to trump anything else. So how, how much do you discount? Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like if the average, like, you know, using a Helium 10 X-ray, you can look at the average. If the average seller is like 1850, we'll go into like 1295. Gotcha. If and we're just trying to get organic sales yeah. and we're just trying to get ranking, yeah. all that. Most importantly, we're trying to get Amazon to love us. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Amazon loves conversions. And Amazon hates wasted sessions. And they hate when things go out of stock because it's all wasted opportunity. They hate it all. They hate every aspect of that. Their algorithm wants consistent sales every single day, 365 days a year. So from the day that listing is live, we make sure there's consistent sales. And the part of that is the price, not just the ranking. The ranking is really 50%. The PPC, a good listing at a good price is really the other 50%. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the pop-up group's a nice little bonus because you can get content to your listing. It's just, it's that little, it's a little uh, cherry on top at the end. You know what I mean? Staying on the price topic, what what indicators do you look for before you start raising that price back up to where they want to be? Good question. Uh, we we like to see, this is arbitrary, but we like to see about 25 reviews. Gotcha. Um, I found two milestones with products, 10 and 25. Before 10, like the, as soon as you hit double digits, it's like an immediate effect mm-hmm. of sales. And when you hit 25, it's another effect. And then after that, you don't really see a difference for 100, 200. And that's long beyond, I'm, I'm, I'm long gone at that point. So mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't recommend anyone raise this price before 25 reviews. And uh, if you can get that first 25 in 60 days, that's a perfect time. And then what you would do is you'd raise 50 cents or a dollar max, depending on the price of your product. If your product's $40, you could probably go up a buck, right? If your price is, if your product's $15, you probably want to go up 50 cents a day. And what you do is you go up, you wait a day, you, you check your sales. If your sales are same or better, you go up 50 cents again. If your sales are worse, you wait. And you see if it was an anomaly or if it was actually the price. And sometimes, I mean, you could be the highest and, and it's like the perceived value, right? Like you're getting a better oh, value. Yeah, we, we will keep going, guys. We will, we will go until the sales slow down. I will, I will take it to the moon. If I can, if I'd sell for five hundred dollars, if I could, just for keep sure. going until the sales slow down. And right when you hit that peak, boom, that's your price. Especially with all these Amazon fees going on and cost of shipping yeah. and all that stuff. And you so let's pay say back your launch too. So for sure. Well, you're, let's say you do your launch, and anybody who's ever launched a product, you know, you launch it thirty days, and like one hundred twenty days from now, it may not have stuck. Like it didn't stick to like where you want it to be on page one. What what service? And my, my thought is like, okay, now I need to do a ranking campaign or something. What, what do I need to do there? If I've done a launch and it's not sticking, what's the next step that I should probably do to like improve that ranking? How do I get that ranking back? Uh, fix the listing is the first thing. So ranking is going to be a bandaid on a, on a, on top of a wound that you need to sew up. You know what I mean? This is my best way to give an analogy on it. So fix your listing. If it's not sticking, your listing is pro- there's something wrong. Your price, your offer, your image, um, and it sometimes is really easy fixes. Like you know, your images are just a little cheesy. You just need to get them, a, you know, tweak them, update them, use a different company. So I like to when when people come to me about that and they, they, when they fail the landing. I had an email today of a guy who says we had an incredible launch with you. Um, two months in, yeah, two months after the launch was over. So what's that? 180 days. Yeah. We're just, we're dying. Our sales are nowhere. And I said, what changed? Did you run out of inventory? Did you get bad reviews? I checked. You got some bad reviews, you know, stuff like that. So there's always a reason why you lose ranking. And it's, it's most of the time something you could do something about. Sometimes the product's just a bum product and the reviews will tell you that. And you need to probably, uh, um, I hate to say it, but you got to sometimes cut, cut the cord sometimes. It's, oh, yeah. tough it's better to, to cut it early than cut it later. 
cut it yeah. earlier than cut Oof. it later. It, it's hard to do that, right? Like it's hard to be like, oh, I, I put so much time in this product, but it's just not doing well. And 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 I'm speaking out of experience here. You just get, <laughs> yeah. you got to get rid of it. Like you can't cut make it. it shinier. Like it's not gonna work. You got to cut it. You got to do it. Usually, my clients who do launches with me, they're more they're they're, they're happier to cut it because to, because we have a formula. You know, they don't feel as scared. They're kind of like, good, we can, you know, we, if we have the right product, we have a launching strategy. So there's a little more optimism with like, you can recreate that. You can do it again. And, it, and, it, and if you learn from this one, you take what you learned to the next one, we could have a kick-ass launch next time. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, like, it's a validation process, essentially. It's like you're validating yeah. the success of that product. What, like, what about inventory? Okay, so uh, you're yeah. launching a product. Uh, I mean, you definitely don't want to go out of stock. There's no doubt about that. But do, do you set some like required like amount of inventory that you're they need to have to get through this ranking phase? And how do you how do you figure that out? Most of the time, it's a minimum of a thousand units. Okay. So it's usually our rule, like, and it's not a rule like we won't let you do a program. It's not a rule. It's more of a suggestion. Thousand yeah. units. Um. I was just having this conversation today and we just launched a product. We're selling, we sold 49 units yesterday. Today it's at like 57. It's on like day 20. It's a supplement product. So we're really thrilled. It's going really well. And they're like, how many units do we send in? Um, and we agreed on 3,500 more units. Um, so they had lead time of only three or four weeks. Though. Yeah, so, that's like, great. They, and, so for them in a supplement or a skincare position, you can start with a thousand. You can see how it's going by day 14, 15, and you can do a reorder and it'll make it in, in time. When you're dealing with China, you're probably flying that stuff in and spending a boatload of money doing a reorder. Yeah, been there. Yeah. <laughs> so That's with brutal. China, with it, it's brutal. It sucks. It just sucks. It's, but you're excited about it. Your launch is going well. But it's like you're at Vegas and you had one good hand and you're like, you're putting, you're like whipping out all your money and you're going, let's go. You're putting all your money on black. It's so, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been oh. down that road before. Uh, <laughs> how about, how about uh, expressing inventory by air over and then it doesn't get checked in for four weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're dead. You're dead. Yeah. You're dead. It's a I mean, dead man walking. Yeah. Uh, it's such a stressful pro uh, like problem. Like it's, like, when you're doing product research, you got to be like, "Hey, I got to have enough to launch because I'm going to give away this much, but I got to also have enough so I don't sell out." And you're putting all this capital up front. It's like, oh, I know. So and you don't want too much because what if the product sucks and now you have three thousand units? That's Good right. Good luck selling your three thousand units. No one wants to pay five dollars for them. That's how it works. It's hard, <sighs> hard to unload them. But I can tell you this: it gets easier. Each launch gets better. Each launch you learn from the last one. You take that information. It's kind of like. You, you just have to not be deterred. You have to be in it for the long run. Um, most of my clients are established brands, so it's easier for them because they already have a, a whole portfolio of the store and they're doing seven, eight figures. Um, and I find that luck happens more to the, to, to the already lucky. <laughs> yeah. You know, guys who don't need it. It's like back to the Vegas analogy. Guys who don't need the money tend to win. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the way it is. You know, if you come in with your last 5,000 bucks to your name, <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to have trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> so. But it goes all back to that risk. Favors the, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of why we go back to like taking some risk because if you, if it's your last 5,000 bucks, your last $10,000, you put it all on credit cards or whatever, or you borrowed from your kid's college fund, you know, and you're like, I, you know, I really want to do this. And you don't have a launch strategy. This is where it goes into. Is it better to hire bullseye sellers, take some risk with Amazon or take all the risk with Amazon and this product mm -hmm. just sitting and not selling? Yep. It's like, I'd rather take some risk than 100% of the risk of exposing mm -hmm. myself to just, because once the listing's dead, listing's dead. If the listing sits with no sales for a few weeks, it's really hard That's to remind. Yeah. 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 Especially if it's a more competitive niche, there's, it's really hard to get that back. I'm struggling with that right now for one of my products. Yeah. Uh, which we well, need to go see Ian. What's you gotta that? See me. No. You gotta <laughs> see me. 
I know. You know, we, we do a lot of re-ranks, and um, the only times we see success with re-ranks is there's two scenarios where we see success. One, the client actually fixed the problem. They actually did a refresh, like fix the images, found the reason why the conversion wasn't good. You know, the Am new Amazon A-B split testing thing is pretty cool. Oh, so powerful. It. It's cool. Super cool. Um, and the other reason is just because they ran an inventory and the product just sold the gang gangbusters. Then we can usually, we don't have to fix anything. We just get it back in depth right. and bam, there it goes. Yeah. And that's the other reason. Is but a lot a of such... re-ranks are not, or a lot of re-ranks don't work. I would say 40% of all of the ranking, they slide back. Is there such thing as like restarting the honeymoon phase? Yeah, I mean variations are the main way people do it. I've I've heard some hacks about like refreshing your listing and like deleting it or reinstating it. And I don't know the ins and outs. And to me, it sounds sounds Complex. risky. Yeah, risky. Yeah, yeah. But the variations are really really good. I like variations. I like doing. Oh, we'll do a two pack or we'll do a two ounce or whatever. That's a That's completely smart. different strategy, possibly if you're launching a new variation, right? I mean, there's your yeah, you, because you don't that, need if if your product has reviews and has images, you don't yeah, need you, the, you don't need the quantum aspect. You don't need the group, right? We just hit the keywords. Thank you. Speaking speaking of reviews, I don't know if we touched on this very much, but how during this launch phase, what are you doing to try to get more reviews? Is it all organic? Is it is it from the search find by people, or, or are you just using the request a review button? Inside yeah, so we we have a strict rule that we don't allow our people to review unless the person who's managing the Facebook group in a quantum, you know, that pop up group, straight up asks. If they ask, it's not up to me. I'm not I'm not having a conversation. My client is, so I let my client be responsible for their risk tolerance. If they want one review, if they want five. Um, I usually like to have a conversation with them and be like, Hey, you know, don't get too greedy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it, so that's the, the quantum group is if there, if there is going to be reviews, it's going to be in that environment. Outside of that, you're never going to get reviews from us from search find by buyers ever. So should I turn off my automated review request button tool? If I'm going to do a, a launch or a rank? Yeah, it's probably good uh, because you don't want people to overdo it. People are very eager to please, especially when they get a free product. You know, they're like, oh, I loved it. And if you didn't straight up ask, they might click on it. And we have rules to tell them to not click on it. But these are human beings and human beings have their own ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and and they maybe late at night forgot about the rule and said, oh, I really love my sweater. And they'll click on it. Um, I, I, I would prefer if people didn't have those automated emails during the launch. Yeah. For yeah. for people who don't really understand um, that, w explain the risk of too many reviews coming in potentially too soon from those search find by. Like, what? Yeah. How is Amazon perceiving that, and what is the risk involved for that for that uh, business? So the algorithm they have set up is a ratio. So they want to they they know that the average there's an average amount of people who review any single product on Amazon's platform. And they know it by category. They know like beauty gets a certain amount, toys get a different amount. So a search find by group generally feels indebted. They're a different group than a regular group who bought the product organically and paid money. That group couldn't care less about what you think. You know, the guy that paid $25 for your product, he'll write the review if he really either is upset or he's really happy. Those are the only two circumstances. Where with search find by, They'll just write a review because they just want to thank you for getting a free product. So you have to watch that because that will increase your review velocity on the listing and you can get a flag and you can get in trouble for why are you getting 17% of your purchases are reviewing? Like that's not real. Mm -hmm. It's normally 1.5% in this category. So that's why. Uh, yeah. Those oh, emails are scary too. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know. Everyone gets freaked out. Oh everyone my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get a little nervous anytime I get an email. I'm nervous me. now. I know. Before I even open it, I'm like, I think no. Chris is sweating over there. He's like, yeah. sweating over there. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, I I love talking about this. We could talk about this. Well, it's time. strategy, right? Like yeah. you could do the research, you could do the listing, and then now you got strategy and like. And, I, and that doesn't what you're going to do. It may have a little bit higher risk tolerance than what I'm going to do. Like, I mean, I want to do yeah. like, so it's all like, now it's your own risk. And I like how Ian said, like, 
you know, we, we can help here, but you're taking the risk on. Yeah. A hundred percent. And look, I do everything I can to, to, to make it um, risk-free or it's never a hundred percent risk-free. Right. Ever. And it just being on Amazon isn't risk-free. Like right. let's just be you're honest. minimizing you know? the risk. Yeah. Just sitting on your ass, there's risk because your listing can get taken down. But mm-hmm. um, I'm minimizing the risk by, I we never use any links. Um, we don't let people review. It's a huge one. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't run a review business where I just sell reviews. Um, and then we diversify the keywords guys. This is huge. Like if you want to, if you want Amazon to find out that you're doing search, find buy pile 20 buys a day on a keyword. That's one way that you could be a moron. It'd be like, and Amazon will be looking at the listing if they have an algorithm, which I haven't confirmed they do. But if I was Amazon and I would make one of these, because I, I, it's it's obvious that this would be an easy way to do it. It'd be like you're getting ninety six percent conversion rate on blue sweater. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So we don't we don't we diversify keywords. Um, we don't allow large campaigns anymore. We don't we we, we don't do those five thousand giveaways. Those days are over. It's just not going to happen. So I kind of I'm kind of the guy who like runs the I like run the bar and I kick everyone out at eleven. That's kind of how I if they drink too much or something. You yeah, know. I'm 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 that guy. I kick <laughs> them out at eleven to make sure everyone has a DD and like you know I'm I I like to have a little risk, have some fun, but leave by eleven. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then like that's, ten that's years ago, you, ten years ago, you were not the place I was going. Maybe now oh, I would go. No, no ten year, ten years ago, I wouldn't have. I would have been twenty four seven. I would have been like that bar. <laughs> I would have been like that vampire bar in Mexico with that Queen Tarantino. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I'm like all conservative and I'm all like, I, I, I'm all just, you know, I take on a lot of my clients' risk because I feel, I feel for their, I really feel for these people. Like I, I, I know that, I know that their money, their, their $10,000 is a huge amount of money to them because mm-hmm. it's a lot of money to me. Sure. $10,000 is a lot of money. And that's typically what a launch costs. And it's like, I take it super seriously. That's awesome. I love this yeah. type of stuff. This yeah. is good stuff. Well, to to wrap it up, because we're going to have you back on. There's no question about it. We've got to talk more. We'll get you back on the podcast uh, down the road. But how can people who are listening right now reach out and start working with you? Well, number one, don't reach out until you have a listing and you have product coming into Amazon. Right. Uh, just because I will, I will talk to you. I'm a nice guy. I love talking to people. But just out of just courtesy for my time, Talk to me when you're closer to the launch date so that we can actually prepare your launch properly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Um, but bullseyesellers.com is my website. And right there, there's 15 places where you could, you know, on every single page where you can make an appointment. I do all the direct appointments still. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do it, but right now I still do every single new client appointment. Um, and I would love to talk to you and see if I can help you guys and, and just show you all the risks and show you all the rewards and let you make an educated decision about how to launch your product. Well, I encourage everyone out there who is uh, already has a product already ready. Uh, there you go. And, and we could uh, we could say the same thing, Chris. If you if you want to learn more about Solozo and you want to start yeah. uh, automating your advertising, you make sure you have an account ready and product selling. There you go. <laughs> No more tire no, kickers. Yeah. No then, more tire kickers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then then we're ready to talk to you. But uh yeah, so everyone go to Bullseye Sellers, um, fill out the uh the, the strategy call button yeah. there, schedule a strategy call. Uh, and you'll be talking with Ian soon. Uh this has been great. Uh we really appreciate you coming on. It it's awesome talking about this. I learned a lot. The uh pop-up Facebook group, that's a, a golden nugget right there. I agree, man. And I appreciate you guys calling that out and, I, and the, the validation. Thank you for that. Um, mm-hmm. And I love talking to you guys and we will do, we will have another call and, and there's a whole nother side of things to talk about with conversion rates and listings and oh, yeah. listing images and stuff and copy that I can go into for another hour. Yeah. So we can talk about that later. Well, no, we will def- we'll do that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much, Ian. And thanks everyone for tuning in. If you like content like this, make sure you're subscribing to this podcast on whatever podcast platform you listen to on. You can also see our live streams on all of Solozo's social channels. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you can go watch old podcasts with great guests that we've had in the past. Uh, so make sure you do that. I, additionally, if you're looking for help with your PPC on Amazon, 
Chris and I would love to talk to you. You can go to solozo.com. You can book a call with one of us. Please make sure you have an active account already <laughs> set up and you make sure you are a real person. Just so I want to really a real, a real person and you're really selling. <laughs> um, and then we can, we, we obviously love talking Amazon. Uh, no matter what stage you're in, we can help you out with your advertising. So solozo.com go there and book a call. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks Ian. We'll catch you.